Hello guys, in my last video I did a comparison between a Fluke PV350 pressure transducer versus a WPS500 Pico transducer and many of you guys enjoyed that video. In that video I used my automotive picoscope and we could see that this is very capable pressure transducer. Now one of my subscribers asked me if I can do same test with a uh, PV350 using it on a uh, Varus uh, scope and uh, I'm gonna do that today this is I got a Varus Pro this should be pretty much the same on a older Varus or um, of course newer ones or maybe even a uh, modus should give us a pretty much the same same waveform now something else I've learned from my first video one of you guys asked me a question apparently fluke move all the production lines to China and uh, they changed the internal of these scopes and uh, apparently they are not as fast as the one they made in US so I'm not sure if that's correct or not I did not do my research I, can't, I got no way to find that out but this unit is made in, in US so this is the older one probably I would say seven eight years old so I would urge you guys to do your research and if that's true if you're looking for used uh, P transducer, look one that's made in U.S. and you're going to be okay. So I don't know is that you know is that relevant or not, but something to keep in mind. Okay, so as I said, we're going to use this uh, transducer with my uh, virus. Now, in order to a uh, fully to get to get best waveform on uh, your scope we need to understand limitation on, on our scope now virus has no on a virus scope or modus you can't do a vertical you can't zoom your your waveform vertically so you got to get, select your voltage scale that is going to reflect your pressure but to get a best to use that voltage the best way you can meaning that like if we do a uh, running compression test which generally runs around 70 to 80 psi knowing that this pressure transducer one millivolt is equal to one psi we want to use a hundred millivolt scale so that's going to give us the best you know resolution on our on our on our screen if we are doing a cranking compression then the next will be 200 millivolts because of course the cracking compression is going to be generally 150, 160, 180 psi. So that's the first thing we need to do. Now on the virus also we got we have to we got an option to zoom out, not to zoom in. So it's kind of different than from from picoscope. Now in order to do that, then you're gonna your 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 uh, time scale is going to be different. It's going to be faster than what you're going to get on on pico. On pico you can if you want to put a half a minute, you can take a minute and get to squeeze as much data on one buffer, and then you can you can zoom in on a on a virus and a snap-on scopes. It's different. You actually zoom out. You know, you, you you choose your your time frame, short time frame, and then you're going to actually squeeze that into the buffer once you stop your your um, uh, waveform. So I'm going to demonstrate that. So uh, it's not it's it's just the way you know. For you guys who use a virus, you already know that. And then uh, the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use a uh, old uh, 2000 series uh, picoscope. This is actually my very first picoscope that I had, and uh, this is a uh, very old one. 20, I think it's a 2200. This is an 8-bit scope, a two-channel, and then I'm going to use a uh, just to see a kind of difference and. Uh, So let's go ahead and uh, and start. Let's set up the scope. Uh, so basically, I'm just get, getting my I got I took, I pulled the spark plug out, put my compression uh, hose in it, and I'm gonna hook up my uh, pressure transducer to my to my hose. Next step we have to do we need to hook up our pressure transducer to a uh, to our our lab scope. If you use only one channel which most of the time if you do insular pressure transducer testing one channel is going to be enough unless you want to do maybe I don't know maybe in um, maybe if you want to measure the uh, 
pressure inside your intake or something like that, you're using like a first look sensor or something, for the most part you're gonna have a uh, only one channel. Now with the uh, with the uh, this uh, system, all you gotta do is just uh, you gotta plug it in your your transducer straight into your into your module into your this I mean module into your into your lab scope. So the first we're gonna do actually we can actually test the uh, scope its uh, module itself. Now this is the positive, this is the negative. So we're gonna turn it this way with the unit off. You wanna plug it in and you should have a uh, 100 millivolts if the battery is good. So I'm gonna change my scale here. Let's go one volt. We can see that. Uh, so basically, right now we're just t testing the battery in the in the module itself to make sure that that's okay, and we measure 134 millivolts. So that tells me the battery inside this module is fine. The next thing we need to do, we need to set our scale on our module. You know, choose what you want to measure, and uh, this time we're going to measure psi. So we're going to move this knob to knob to a psi. And uh, this is for the English. You, this will be a push down this button. If you want to do metric for kilo, kilopascals, it's going to be pushed out. So I'm going to push this in. So this will, my scale is going to be now one millivolt will be equal will be equal one psi. So I'm going to put this back in. Just to make sure it's still on. Okay. It's pretty simple and it's nothing to it. And uh, so now we are pretty much ready actually to start. Now, you, of course, you want to make sure that you are calibrated correctly, that your zero line is pretty close to zero, and it is. And if it's not, there is a knob on the, on the side, right on, on the other side, you, you can actually adjust the knob. But once you adjust that knob, it pretty much stays on zero all the time. It's basically one millivolt, zero millivolts, is, it's, it's a zero PSI. Let's set our scope. Now I'm just going to use a channel one, it's a yellow. Uh, channel you want to do actually filter you want to filter the signal a little bit that's always beneficial because you don't want to get too much noise from uh, from a uh, transducer itself and then uh, scale as I said we're going to do a uh, run, I'm just going to do a running compression test because that's the fastest signal and that's the you know cranking is going to be even better when it comes to resolution and all that so I don't think it's needed okay so since our uh, as I said a uh, I don't want to repeat myself a million times, but anyhow, one millivolt is one, one psi, and uh, we should expect our pressure to be around 70 to 80 psi. So I'm just going to, of course, use 100 millivolts, which is the lowest scale on our on our scope anyway. And uh, I have found that the uh, 15 milliseconds is pretty much is going to give us a pretty good waveform and uh, a little bit of noise here. Um, so you don't want to have the peak detection because you see how, how much how, how noise it is. So you don't want to do that. You want to put a uh, filter on, and it's going to give you a lot nicer waveform. Okay. So I'm just going to show you what happens if you don't put the filter on. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm not sure what these spikes are for. I haven't seen that before, but that's fine. Okay, now we can see a uh, big compression and uh, can raise this up a little bit. So don't be alarmed, you know, with this. I mean, I know we can't, we cannot see yet, we cannot see much of the waveform, but on our scope, we'll have to zoom out. So you want to kind of let it roll for a, to fill up your buffer, and then we'll, uh, we'll stop. We're going to zoom out. Now we can see the uh, RPM is slowing down. Okay, it's kind of weird. It looks like almost the waveform went to the other direction. Okay, let's. Uh, okay, so we can see we can see our compression now. Okay, so from here we can actually, if we have a problem where we have a intermittent problem where the pressure is dropping, compression pressure is dropping into the cylinder, we can look at the peak of the uh, each uh, event and uh, just kind of go through a buffer and see if there's anything unusual right on the top on top of each compression and everything looks fine. Now we can actually slowly zoom in if you want to see a little bit more. 
and we can see our waveform is a, it's coming up and uh, so we can, uh, we can go through the buffer again check our, uh, our peak compression everything looks fine so okay so now we get to a point where we want to actually zoom in and see actually only two events basically 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation so we're going to slowly now actually zoom in you don't want to zoom all the way out because all the way in because it's, you're going to be able to see your waveform so it's going to go times eight and look at see now this is a peak compression we can actually set our cursors here and uh, we can see that the uh, let's see here We got a 57, 57 PS, uh, 57 millivolts. Basically, it's a 57, 57 psi. And then uh, we can lower. You can uh, measure the uh, vacuum, and goes down to minus nine psi, which basically times two, which is 18 minus. Uh, it's 18 inches of mercury, uh, 18 inches of vacuum. So this is your your expansion pocket here, and of course this is the uh, your um, exhaust and then uh, then uh, intake and then uh, com compression and then expansion again now of course we can actually zoom in a little bit one more time and that should give us actually a uh, let's just move this back a little bit that should give us two waveforms that we can actually and it's pretty decent pretty decent waveform Okay, and again, 57 psi. Now we can, and this is what you expect to see on your on your um, bearers or modus or any other snap-on uh, lab scope. Now, something that Pico has and 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 snap-on does not. Now, in order to find your 180 degrees, where your um, you know there's a top dead center here. And then, like we have to, on, I'll show you the difference. Now we have to actually do a calculation. Now we have to measure time between two peaks, basically two uh, 720. Now we have 162 millivolt milliseconds, and uh, so there will be 162 milliseconds divided by 720 degrees, and that gives us actually. Uh, 22 milliseconds, which means that 22 milliseconds is one degree. Now, if we if we uh, uh, multiply by 180 degrees, that's going to give us actually 40 40 milliseconds, and that will. If we set our second cursor at 40 milliseconds right now, it'll give us a uh, 70. I'm sorry, I should be looking. So I have to look here. So there you go. Basically, 22, 22 milliseconds is is one one degree, and uh, this is where our a bottom bottom dead center. Uh, so we can actually now measure 360 360 degrees. That would give us uh, 79 milliseconds. So let's go to. Uh, Seventy-nine milliseconds. So, and then you can actually measure here as well. So anyhow, so this is the uh, this is what you're gonna expect from uh, your various. So it's pretty pretty good waveform. I mean, you can you can do uh, and the nice thing is, as I said, you can actually zoom out, zoom in again, and once once you stop your waveform, and uh, you want to have a filter on, and um, it's it's pretty good. I mean, it, you will you will be able to do you know what you need to do with your with your uh, pressure transducer uh, it's pretty accurate and the uh, waveform is it's in pre pretty good so now as i said i'm going to use a uh, old pico scope where we actually can the, the big advantage of, of pico is that all the calculations we need to do 
to figure out if, there, if we have a jump timing or something like that. So like, like so something that's really nice about this is where we have like a V6 uh, V or V8 engine where we don't know. We have one camshaft sensor and uh, we don't know if the uh, timing is off on, the, on another cylinder head. It doesn't have a camshaft sensor. We can actually capture waveform unknown on one side and then on one cylinder head and then compared to another cylinder head and if there is any discrepancy in the uh, timing this this cursor here the 180 degree actually is gonna it's, it's gonna be in a different spot it's gonna be open if it's here that would mean it, it's, it's retarded if it's here that would be that means that's the uh, camera the uh, exhaust camshafts is actually uh, advanced so this is where the, the uh, the, where the uh, exhaust valve actually starts to open and we can actually measure that angle degree however it's not that easy to do it on, on the, on the um, uh, various because you have to do your math and it's it's possible but it's not it's not as easy I think it's on a, um, I think on some of the website you can actually download the whole chart actually gives you the uh, uh, but it has to be of course uh, your 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 according to your 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 rpm and everything so it's a little bit of a kind of i would say pain to do it but let's just uh let's just put this actually cursor at the um, so we had uh, 180 it was like 39 milliseconds so let's just leave that on that oh, so that's pretty close so this is actually our went bottom dead center. Okay, now I'm gonna use my old picoscope. This is 8-bit. Uh, I don't even know. This is at least 10 years old. Now this, as I said, this is my, my very, 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 very first picoscope. And uh, for some reason the channel, the second channel is some kind of, something's weird going on with it. But at least the uh, uh, first channel is working fine. So we can, we can do... Uh... Okay, on my... Uh... On my Pico, what I did actually, I made a uh, custom probe, and uh, again, it's not needed because again, it's easy, one millivolt, one millisecond. But I did actually anyway. So I just want to show you when you open up your channel, you can go to. So this can be done on automotive scope, non automotive scope. It doesn't matter. So you're gonna go to your. You're gonna open this window. It's gonna give you an, a, a new probe, and I'm just gonna go to my uh, Fluke 350. So instead of now, you're gonna go. You will go to new probe. And this is what windows you're gonna have. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna cancel that, and I'm just gonna go to Fluke 350 already. I'm just gonna get at it. But this is the, the, basically the same window is gonna come up. So once you when you start getting your making your new new probe, this window will come up. You go to next, and then uh, this will be your. It was gonna be a volts. And then you're gonna change that to a pressure or PSI. Go next, and all you gotta do actually on this you're gonna put a uh, on your on your formula, you know, put gradient times uh, 1,000. Basically, that's going to give us one volt, one millivolt. One volt is equal to 1,000 millivolts. That's all. The offset is zero because zero millivolts is zero psi. And I actually use this advanced advanced um, uh, option here to set my uh, pressure, and I prep set 100 to 200. So basically, what you do just uh, I can put like a new range, and um, so. You just set whichever range you like. I like to go with minus uh, 200 psi, the bottom range. And let's just go like 600. Doesn't matter. So you can click OK. So now you have 600. Of course, it's not going to go that high. I can actually just delete this one. But that's what you need to do to get your your scale. And uh, go to next. And uh, I generally don't, you don't need to do this. We're going to filter this later on. And just look PV350 and click finish. Click OK, you're done. OK, and uh, I'm going to bump this up a little bit. And uh, so anyhow, we're going to choose now our pressure transducer and uh, 350. And then uh, I'm going to use a 100 PSI. Select 100 PSI for, and now the time I can go now you can see a difference now I'm, on the Pico I'm using 500 milliseconds which basically it's per division which is almost like a two seconds, no almost it's two seconds on the screen versus a um, 
Uh, what did he use? Like a 20, I don't remember what did he use, and uh, 50 milliseconds, I believe that was, yeah, 50 milliseconds on Varus. So that's that's the difference you want, uh, between two scopes. Because on Ver on, on, on Pico, I'm gonna be able to zoom in my, my waveform. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna plug in my scope, plug in my pressure transducer into a, uh, and, and you can see it's a lot of noise, but we will filter that out with the Pico. Okay. I'm going to do a lot more buffering on this stuff. That's not. So I'm hoping that idle is going to be close enough. It should be close enough what we have with the... Uh, so I'm gonna, now I'm going to zoom in. Okay, and then now you can see there's a lot of noise in this signal on the on the on the pico. And now we actually what we can do on this one, we can actually go down to like 9.5 bit, and that's gonna clean the, our waveform. We can do one more time, and maybe even one more time at 10.5. It actually filters pretty good, and. Um, so this is the waveform we can actually expect to be at the uh, uh, our uh, uh, picoscope, and uh, now there's a little bit of discrepancy here. Well, because I'm probably changing, we got 65 psi uh, peak compression, and on the uh, on the Varus was actually again that it depends of the um, of the uh, is a 5864. Let's see here. Yeah, it was, it was actually 58. So that all, that depends of the uh, of the um, uh, our uh, RPM as well. So all right. So let's go ahead and uh, now we can actually zoom in one more time. I can move it like that. And uh, so now, here's the nice thing about the picoscope. With the, with the, and again, this is a non-automotive picoscope. We can actually, sorry. We can actually now set our cursors here. Now, on the non-automotive picoscope, when you set these these cursors they always gonna be at 360 degrees that's just uh, and I, I didn't find a way how to change that I mean it, it's a uh, uh, default to 360 so what we need to do we need to change that to 720 degrees and you just click like twice on that window and now you're gonna have an option to change it to 120 degrees and you click again and there you go now easy thing about the Pico is that we can simply now deploy our rulers and we can divide our screen, the our waveform, in in four. So for the um, four-stroke engine, and we can see that our 180 degrees here, pretty much lined up in the same in the same place where we had it on our on our Varus. So uh, so our calculation of the Varus was correct. But I just want to show you guys how easy it is. Much easier on a. Uh, Picoscope to a uh, now we can uh, easily actually measure where our we now know that right in this area our exhaust valve will open and now we can actually deploy more cursors. I could put one cursor here, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna line it up with, with it at 180 degrees and go back. And then I'm going to deploy a second cursor. And uh, let's see, we can actually zoom in, give us actually a little bit better way for, let's see, maybe around here. That's when the uh, exhaust, well, you can see that our pressure is going back up. The negative pressure is going back up. I'm sorry. Anyhow, 
and uh, we are at the 23 degrees before before top that center and uh, I mean bottom the center I'm sorry and this is actually literally retarded uh, so usually you can see because yeah I guess it's like usually around 40 degrees or something but this engine runs fine so but I just want to show you how how some how easier it is to uh, calculate everything on the picoscope uh, versus a uh, snap-on scope or any other scope that doesn't have this option you can maybe put a little bit more of the filter and this is very useful uh, usable waveform even on the 8-bit scope but again on the Pico is nice you can actually filter a lot of the noise that comes from the from this uh, transducer itself and uh, there you go and you don't really lose a lot of you know still pretty you know a lot of details you can see on the on the uh, waveform so that's that's pretty pretty good actually and um uh, all right, guys, that would be it. I'm a little confused about the uh, peak compression here being at 64, and uh, it's almost like a 10 psi difference. So, so let's go ahead and uh, do this again. On the, on the, let's just actually let's see. Go back. That's pretty much around 55. That's interesting. Hmm. Again, this this can be due to a uh, RPM, but a little bit of a discrepancy there. I don't have explanation for that. Let's do it one more time on a virus. See what we got. This is just uh, due to a uh, different RPM. Let's see. Actually, there's a. Let's see here. Yeah, you're okay. That's 65. So yeah, that's that's fine. That was just a different RPM. So, but I mean, you know, we can see that. You know, waveforms are. It's pretty nice. That's pretty good, actually. Okay guys, this video, uh, I'm kind of glad I could actually show two different scopes and two different ways of capturing the waveforms and what you need to do, how to uh, to get the most benefits out of your scope, you know, what you need to pay attention to and uh, sometimes it can be can be stressful, you know, you understand why you're getting the waveform and you know, why is it the way it is, but uh, if you know what, what signal you should well what's what's this uh, range you know pre pre is it pressure voltage or something you know you need to know especially on, on a snap-on scope the, the fact that you cannot do the vertical zoom you need to set your scope to optimal level to select the optimal voltage scale to get a bad the best signal you can get and uh, that's about it I think you guys you know the uh, you know again when it comes to the uh, this fluke scope uh, a transducer. I'm not sure if uh, it has anything to do with this. This one is made in U.S. Does the Chinese version is not as good? But if you're looking for the used one, just look for one that's made in U.S. and you should be fine. I mean, it, it, and uh, honestly, for for you guys who are serious about insular pressure transducer testing, I would really recommend finding a old 2000 series scope. They, they're, they're actually Pico. I used to have one. It's, I think it's like a 2205, I believe. It's like a pocket size uh, Pico scope, two channel as well. General around $150. Excellent scope for... It's so much easier to measure your, your you know, you, you, you set your, your cursors, you divide in four. I mean, you put like, so much, so many cursors you can put in, and it's, it's, it's measuring the time and degrees, it's ten times easier than, than uh, and any other scope, as far as I know. Uh, so, uh, it's just, uh, it's just, again, if you are into it, if you want to, you know, learn and, and get 
the, the benefits from insular pressure transducer testing, getting a inexpensive, cheap, old Pico scope makes sense. It really does. I mean that you can see the difference on the on the. Uh, now even though this is an 8-bit scope, you have to filter a little bit to, but there's a very usable waveform. You can do all the measurements you need to do to get your to get your testing. Now, I'm not good as, as some other guys that can actually analyze every single curve or whatever on the, on the waveform. I don't know, but for what I need to see, you know, I need to see peak compression, I need to see my, my expansion pocket, I need to see my vacuum, my exhaust, you know, and of course, all these waveforms are going to look a lot better. I don't want to go through because of the, you know, switch too much, too much time, but if you do cranking compression, the quality of the waveform is going to be even better. And uh, so, that's it guys. All right. I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, one more time, if uh, one more thing, if you want to do a uh, wide open throttle test, you want to increase your time scale of uh, your, your voltage scale as well, you know, uh, because the uh, wide open throttle test it can be three times as as much. So you want to set your scale probably at 300 millivolts to capture the whole waveform. So uh, again, it's just uh, kind of common sense, you know, depends what your peak compression is going to be you should know approximately you know what you what to expect to set your to select your, your your voltage scale so that's about it okay guys well that's it thank you so much and I'll see you next time thank you bye bye